Chris Thayer slides. Anyway, I'm obviously not Chris Thayer. Um, unfortunately, Chris was taken ill this morning and ended up in the ER up here. Um, she'll be okay, but she was not, would not be able to talk. So um, she was going to talk about the development of a language standard for environmental health. And I think one of the things that Dan called for at the beginning of his talk was to make sure that we're all using the same language. And this is a huge issue. We actually held an ontology workshop, a data ontology workshop a couple of months ago to begin to develop common, um, common wording, common understanding of what we mean. And we started that this morning, right? Well, you know, what do you mean by data? What do you mean by reanalysis or replication or reproducible? Um, and I think that a common language for environmental health would foster the interoperability of databases and promote sharing, reuse, and reanalysis of data and therefore hopefully accelerate the pace of discovery. We put out a request for information um, and you have about another three weeks to respond to that and we would love to hear additional ideas from any of you. Next slide. So, um, the NTP began an effort about two years ago with Chris in the lead, she's the head of our Office of Hazard Assessment and Translation, about developing kind of a new approach to systematic review. Now, systematic review, there are a number, the Cochrane, for example, methods and so on, have been used very successfully related to clinical medicine. But how do you do it when you're dealing with environmental issues where hopefully you don't have controlled clinical trials? Um, we may have intervention studies, but not con control <laughs> clinical trials. But how do we incorporate the data streams from the observational human studies, from the, all the animal data that we heard, for example, about some of the toxicology information, and what about all the mechanistic information? How do we begin to um, incorporate that data? So we have a major effort going in trying to develop an approach to systematic review so that information which is used in decision making um, or in the analysis that will lead to decision making is fully transparent and that anyone could follow the steps and the thought processes that were involved. Uh, we've been working very closely with EPA as their, the Office of Research and Development is looking at these approaches as well, as, as well as many others. Um, but one of the key issues here that we often run into is the issue of people not meaning the same things using the same words and then also how can we get all the data um, that, that had abstracted so that everyone can have access to it. Um, so what we've been trying to, for some key studies and in key questions that we're trying to address, we're being, um, developing a database format that all the data can be put into and trying to make these um, data abstraction files totally publicly available. If everyone can see the same data, this will not only increase transparency, but it will allow different people um, to do an independent or supplemental or updated analysis of the data that's out there. Now, trying to um, create data repositories of the abstracted data um, is, is a huge effort, um, takes a great amount of time right now um, in order to abstract data, it's currently done by individuals. Well, every time you have to employ people, you're talking about lots and lots of money when you have lots and lots of data. So that we, what we are trying to look to do is could, create more web-based approaches that would have interactive capabilities. Kind of the next slide. So some of the things that we're working on is really de developing very sophisticated programs to manage the information for systematic review. Um, the, how the data is abstracted and how it is visualized. And this is all becoming readily available to the community and people have opportunities to use this. I should say in the process of developing these approaches, we've held a series of webinars to present the approaches, get information from all the different stakeholders, and we were actually trying now to run to see how it works in a number of key, key issues. So some of the publicly available um, ab abstraction and um, systems that we have and abilities to visualize the data are Dragon, um, Hawk, and Hawk, I should say, we're ve working very closely with the folks at ICF International and folks at UNC Chapel Hill in developing these two web-based systems. Um, the programs are totally modular, so if you're interested in only looking at clinical data, 
you can do that. If you're interested in only looking at the observational data from human epidemiology studies, you can do that. If you're really focusing on the tox studies, you could just look at that. Or in many cases, you're going to want to look at the whole thing in order to come and make a decision based upon all the available information. So one thing we'd like to kind of raise is um, kind of a question as we go forward is should we begin to think, should we begin to work with the publishing community about maybe there should be some standards for submitting studies for the journal publication. So could there be standardized formatting, for example, the methods and the key findings that would help in uh, reporting quality and make automatic curation more feasible? In other words, if there are keywords, you know, there's lots of text mining software that's out there now that you can get a lot of information, but could there be some key things that are required um, for publication of many types of data? And then this could allow for automated curation of the published findings into the databases, which then, when you have that, that could become a research tool that could be used again. So I have no idea if this is what Christine was going to say, but <laughs> I hope it's been informative and will stimulate some discussion. Thank you.